starting to see quite west of north there, a good pool, that's the Peter Brennan. Lord Mayor, to advise members that apologies for absence have been received from councillors Dave Cummings, George Nib, Barry Kushner, Joanne Kushner, Sarah Morton, and Gerard Woodhouse. Are there any other further apologies? Councillor Lindsay Media. Yeah, Lord, Lord Mayor, the, the, can I just give Robson an apology? And, uh, it's, 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 Lily Hennigan's apology is that she back. Councillor Resolution used to be like this deputy made her brother died at the day of today. So she's actually obviously gone home. Lily's taken it over to make sure she's all right, but if we accept the apology. She's staying for the ceremony of this one, everybody, so know that until after the it's important that everyone knows why she's left. Councillor Lindsay Media. Lord Mayor, can I remind members that you are only required to declare at meetings any disclosable pecuniary or prejudicial interests, in which case the member will need to leave the chamber during consideration of the item. Are there any such declarations? My Lord Mayor, I uh, declare an interest in item 7A as the Chairman of the Local Authority Mutual Investment Trust, which is a commercial property fund for local government. Incidentally, it's on pay in case of Uh, minutes of the last meeting of the council. Can I ask that the minutes of the Budget City Council meeting held on the 6th of March 2019 are approved, which are, are, are attached as Appendix 1 to this note. Are they agreed? Look, well, just while you're doing that, because a lot of people know Mary's brother, Jed, it's a, a brother, Michael, who was a younger brother, just in case people. You know, Jed from the bed, it's not Jed, it's the younger brother Michael. Lord Mayor, can I formally report the 2019 local election results are set out on pages 15 to 25 of the agenda. Okay, it's my duty now to welcome all of you councillors uh, to Liverpool City Council and to those councillors who are returning after the local elections. As we hope that for the new councillors that it's going to be uh, quite uh, a new experience and one that you will hopefully uh, take in your stride but I'm sure that there are many long-standing councillors and certainly council officers to help you, assist you, advise you along the way. Please, please don't be afraid to ask. Thank you very much. Got to get this right. Appointments of the Deputy Mayors of Liverpool, Cabinet Members and Responsibilities and Mayoral Leads 2019-20. Mayor Anderson. Lord Mayor, can I advise uh, Council that Council of Henry Sarah has been given the statutory designation of uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, Council of Henry and Council of Gary Miller uh, designated as, as Deputy Mayors and the names of the Cabinet Members and the portfolios are set out in Appendix 2. 
to uh, the names of the mayor of Leeds will be circulated and all members will be reported to the next meeting of uh, the City Council. Uh, well, can I uh, just ask a couple of questions of the uh, elected mayor? Uh, firstly, uh, in discussions that you had with group leaders before uh, the elections, uh, you did suggest that you might create a mayoral select committee again, not to do uh, the bitty stuff which you rightly objected to last time, but perhaps in the way that we're doing for the experimental council meetings, just take two or three issues in the year and consider uh, in, in great depth and detail and jointly how those might be tackled. Uh, I know it's not here today. Is it your intention to revisit that idea later? Or perhaps follow the suggestion I made about some sort of ongoing mayoral commission to look at it. Uh, the second thing is that uh, at our first, if I can put this way, proper council meeting, we will be diverting that to climate change. And it would seem to me that perhaps as a result of that, we might choose either to recommend jointly from all of us that we need to have a cabinet member specifically looking at that, or some sort of ongoing support committee. Okay. We, are we, are going going to, we are going to talk about the uh, constitutional issues in a minute, but I'm happy to pick up them, but not at this particular stage. We are going to be talking about that on item 10, and, and I'll discuss those two particular issues he's, he's raised. Okay, so I can leave that discussion to them, please. Thank you. <coughs> Responsibility for functions and scheme of delegation 2019-20, as set out on pages 25 to 82 of the agenda. Councillor Ruth Bennett to move. I move that the recommendation of the Constitutional Issues Committee held on the 9th of May 2019 in respect of responsibility of functions and the scheme of delegation for 2019-20 as set out in the report submitted on pages 26 to 83 of the agenda be approved together with one, the Director of Regeneration and Employment Services to be given the following delegated authority to exercise all powers under the regulatory reform Fire Safety Order 2005 in relation to Anfield and Goodison Park Sports Ground as agreed at the Council meeting on the 18th of July 2018. Thank you. Just on, adding to that, um, with regards to uh, the uh, it, it links into the, the inclusive growth plan, but also uh, links into the mail of neighbourhood fund. Uh, I intend um, th this year to actually put another £1 million uh, to be made available to local wards, in particular the poorest wards uh, in, in, in the city, to enable them to uh, do projects or work on projects uh, within the uh, city, but in terms of their wards in particular, in relation to inclusive growth. So there will be a framework uh, that will be uh, sent to all members shortly, but it's very much in, in relation to um, the serious issues that many parts of the city face. We, I, I spoke today at, at, a, at the National um, Federation of Credit Unions, um, just been doing an interview about universal credit. The challenges that are facing uh, the poorest people in the city is getting uh, really, uh, really difficult uh, for them to manage. And, and there are many organisations and many uh, community groups that need our support to help them deliver uh, to those poorest parts of, of, of the city and the world. So we're going to be looking at uh, working at the framework uh, in conjunction with Councillor Corbett. Um, uh, uh, around uh, equality and supporting uh, poverty issues within the city. So we'll present that, I think if we, we'll do that uh, through uh, our uh, leaders' uh, sessions, but there will be a framework that's presented uh, to councillors so they can look at whether and where uh, their communities are within that matrix about how they can bid uh, 
for extra money. Uh, and as long as it's linked to inclusive growth, and as long as it's supporting uh, the most vulnerable and the poorest, uh, access resources or support, uh, that's how it will be used. So it's in addition to the uh, neighbourhood fund of one million, it's in addition to that. And I just make the point that, by the way, I think it's uh, uh, just, just to make the point that, well, actually, we uh, procured uh, an agreement with uh, Red Row and uh, LMH Housing uh, a number of years ago. Um, and it was as a result of that procured contract arrangement that we've got um, some uh, money, and that money has been put back into the poorest uh, neighbourhood. So, just to let you know where it comes from. Any other speakers? Is that agreed? Thank you. Seven. Seven eight, commercial property investment strategy, councillor repairs. Uh, I move that the decision of Cabinet of the 17th of May 2019 to endorse the proposed commercial property investment fund strategy outlined within the report and strategy as set out on pages 258 to 299 of the supplementary agenda be approved. Any other speakers? Councillor Makinson. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. I'll hope not to delay you too long from, from, from your guests. Uh, but we'll be opposing item 7A, not least for the way this has been pushed through for a supplementary agenda that only actually appeared on, uh, on Friday night. Uh, I suspect this document is probably still sitting in some members pigeonholes. So, I, I, I hope so, Robert, can I just raise a point of order? And, and it's absolutely this, and I hope you, I'm sure, will be fair uh, and equitable in your decision-making process. But the councillor is misleading council members. It was sent out in the proper way Ten days ago, in a proper way, so for it to be called in uh, and debated and discussed, and indeed you could have turned up the cabinet when it was discussed last week. So to give a false uh, impression to people that it's being forced through on Friday is just not true. My Lord, I have actually the email that came out for this supplementary agenda, and it was at half two on Friday. This that, that is actually for this. So the supplementary agenda was to tell you that this item was going to be a supplementary agenda to this. The actual item went out in the proper process ten days before it was discussed at Cabinet. Now you tell me that in all the years you've been sitting there, you don't know that. Right. But obviously you don't. Well. We go, we'll, we'll park that argument for that because there are plenty of other issues. You, you yeah. cannot park it, you have lost it. No, I'm not lost. You I'm have not lost the argument. This so you are with the Jameson State Spec. You are not the argument. You have lost it. The city solicitor or the, the law fair or the chief executive will correct, if I am wrong, the fact that that report went out in proper due process in the timelines that we followed. Am I, can, I, can somebody confirm that that was the case, please? Okay, so that's the case. So, well, as there's been opposition to this, we'll go straight to the vote. Well, sorry, I haven't actually changed my points, uh, my love, uh, Okay. So, I'll, I will be brief. Okay. Right. Just for, the, for those who, anyone who may not have read this, this proposes borrowing, uh, well, spending £50 million, half of which would be borrowed money, to gamble on commercial property investments around the UK. No reference has actually been made in the report to sit for guidance, uh, which strongly recommends that all investment property is restricted to the locality of a council's area. Uh, yet we're being asked to approve a strategy that would see no more than 25% of this 50 million invested within Liverpool. This means most of this money will have no regeneration benefits to this city. At the very least, a commitment like this should have at least should have been first referred to the audit committee for proper and thorough scrutiny for a decision of this size. So, for all these reasons, we'll be opposing this. Councillor Bradford. Uh, certainly, I was aware that items were circulated and our members got to it. Um, can, I, can I make a suggestion? I, I don't think there's any 
merit delaying a decision that's been populistically circulated. I can imagine it's the sort of fund and investment opportunity that will develop. It won't happen overnight. But can, I, can we deal with a question about local authority boundaries? When you're making a good investment, does it matter if the business is parked on one side of the thing all day in Dovecot or the other side of the thing all day in Dovecot? Does it really matter whether it's parked on one side of Elwood, the Melbourne part, or the Liverpool part of Elwood? I think we need to get away from seeing things in narrow boundaries of local government, which is insular, and cuts across communities, what we actually should be doing is thinking about the Liverpool travel to work area. I make no apologies, there's no doubt I've been great for mine by one of members, for saying when I was a president of the we recruited across ten local authorities at the city there. Because that was the pool for investment of professional labour. You don't just say, oh, it's going to stop recruiting people if you're on the wrong side of Melbourne border, or they're the wrong side of Compton, or the wrong side of Edward. So the idea that somehow, if you invest in a business that's going to give you a good return, that happens to be just outside the door is wrong, is actually showing a total naivety for the concept of the travel work to area. So um, the counter making someone's objection, I think, is actually dangerously short-sighted. Councillor Morby? Sorry, I forgot what Councillor Corbyn said. In the principle, 
here, I think, are welcome, but important to consider carefully. The straightforward issues it raises. What is, we've done investment before in specific things. QR building, great success. But this extends the range of that. That needs consideration. Consideration. There is an argument which we need to consider about growing public risk in property investment. It doesn't mean we shouldn't do it, but it needs to be considered. Then the issue is in terms of the inclusive growth plan. What's the balance of investment for, to make money or to invest in the city? Now, there's no perfect answers to that question, but there are issues of public interest which we should consider. I recognise that this strategy has to be agreed by full council, and I think it should come back here to be agreed, but I think there will be great benefit in further deliberation and audit before it comes about. Because with all due respect to this chamber, it's not the best space for detailed consideration. And I think audit and governance, which sadly I no longer sit in, I'm sure the chair will be mortified by that, but um, uh, would be a good place for further discussion and in a way that I think everybody could get behind. Councillor Miller, we believe. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Welcome, Lord Mayor. Um, the fact that there's been elections and there will be another election makes no difference. We are here to serve the city every day of the year and as much and as well as we can. And let's not be distracted by elections. And also, um, all of our members understand that papers come out for cabinet in advance, one week in advance, and you have an opportunity. I know it's too early in the morning, maybe Councillor Makinson, to get out to a cabinet meeting. You read the papers, come along, question us there at cabinet. That's your job. If you're not doing it, you're failing doing your job. And also, it was Liberal Democrat policy through Richard Kemp in the city to have a Liverpool bank that would do things just like that. So you're changing your minds now. You think it's a bad idea because we've come up with a great idea. And you know what? It's only about creating a fund. It's not about actually making the investments. Auditing governance, cabinet members, all of us in this chamber can come to every committee every cabinet meeting and can question us and say this is not right this is right and you've had the opportunity to actually come to the meetings to call it in and you grandstand there and say it's a bad idea it's a great idea please support it thank you thank you Councilor Miller Mayor Anderson there is no issue about referring it to the select committee or referring it to orders, I've got no problem with that. Absolutely not. So let's just do it. But you know what? I am not going to take lectures from the Liberal Democrats who opposed QNAR, opposed it, opposed our investments in the airports, opposed our investments in Finch Farm. All that investment is now bringing us money exactly as Councillor Corbett said, to spend on services in this city. That will cut from us while you were in government, your party were in government. But let's not forget that. We're not going to take any lectures from you about it. But you know, it absolutely amazes me that in front of you and in front of all the councillors, you will see the legal framework and how it refers to SIPFA and the SIPFA guidance and it's an insult to the legal team of this council and to our finance director and the chief executive when you're actually questioning that. Because I have more confidence and greater confidence in their ability than I would ever have in yours or your opposed. The fact is, let's take it back to the Regeneration Select Committee, let's take it to all the accounts and let's scrutinise it. Because we only do it if it's a good deal for our city. So I've got no problem in transparency or openness in terms of that. But don't sit there and criticise us for not following the proper process when we did. Councillor. I have to be to the Okay, so is that, is that a great that it goes to audit and governance on the 13th of June and then comes back here to council on the 17th of July? Is that a great?
Thank you. For references, Councillor Brown. Number eight. Sorry, I, I, Review of Financial Regulations 2019-20. Councillor Ruth Bennett, to move. Yeah, I move that the recommendation of the Constitutional Issues Committee set held on the 9th of May 2018 in respect of financial regulations for 2019-20 is set out in the report submitted on pages 84 to 98 of the agenda be approved. Are there any speakers? Okay, is that agreed? Thank you. Number nine, contract standard orders 2019-20. Councillor Ruth Bennett. I move that the recommendation of the Constitutional Issues Committee held on the 9th of May 2019 in respect of contract standing orders 29-20 and is set out in the report submitted on pages 99 to 153 of the agenda be approved. Are there any speakers? Okay, is that agreed? Thank you. Number 10, procedural standard orders 2019-20. Councillor Ruth Bennett. I move that the recommendation of the Constitutional Issues Committee held on the 9th of May 2019 in relation to amendments to the procedural standing orders be approved. Mayor Anderson. Yeah, look, we did have a, a discussion with Councillor uh, Kemp uh, alluded to that in his discussion. On, on the issue of the uh, male scrutiny, scrutiny committee, I just refer you back to my points that I made to you when we met. And the male scrutiny committee failed miserably, failed absolutely miserably. And the reason why they did it because it was bus lanes, bus lanes, bus lanes, bus lanes, bus lanes, bus lanes. That was all that ever was discussed. Nothing more. Nothing else. Reams and reams of, of bus lane, bus lane questions and stuff, wasting council officers' time. I think Councillor Radford agrees with me that that was what it made me. So I'm all in favour of scrutiny. In fact, the LTA, as you, you are aware, if you look at the report, it's on page 224, actually said it was the most scrutinised council in the country. That's what they said, not what I said. The LTA actually said it. Page 224. We've actually now, so the, the answer to that is if you come up with a structure or you come up with a way of, of, of doing, doing it differently, I'll consider it. But I'm also going to talk to group members of my group, but also to all council here, to talk about how we had a positive discussion around how do we look at it, how do we get a better debate and movement of, of, of things that are important to our city. Now, I'm throwing that back at you because it's only half an hour ago that you said when we all stand together and all fight for the things that are important to our city, we work together. That's what you said, it was you know, quite moving. Um, but the reality is, is that, is that we discussed, me, you, uh, uh, Councillor Radford and Councillor uh, uh, Crowell, uh, we discussed how we would look at together the council uh, cycle and how we have better debates and we agree that the first uh, meeting is my suggestion that we had for our first debate and discussion the issue of climate change. You also agreed with me as, as we uh, discussed the issues of climate uh, emergency. If you remember we had that discussion uh, around that and I agreed with Councillor uh, that we were indeed facing an emergency uh, of climate uh, concerns and, and it was an agency. But I also pointed out to them that what we needed was the government to respond with the opposition. I'm absolutely thrilled and delighted to say that Labour nationally, our Labour uh, comrades in Parliament, persuaded the Parliament and government to accept a climate uh, emergency. And so I have absolutely no problem and no qualms in declaring that we have a climate emergency. And it's now about how do we deal with it and what can we do together in agreement, knowing the consequences of our actions and our inactions and how we do that. So there is an agency around this issue. And I intend setting up a climate select committee. And there will be an opportunity for us to agree, not just a statement, 
about climate of agency at that meeting, but about how do we then progress? How do we actually tackle the issues of, of emissions? How do we look at housing and energy conservation? How do we look at all of the things that are going to impact on us? Not over one meeting, but over a successor, because I intend to put in a cabinet member for climate change. And that will then mean that we'll have a select committee that will respond to the first initial meeting of the council, then the select committee picks up and talks about how we deliver that. So there will be an additional select committee on top of the eight that we already have. So having a male select committee on top of what we've got, to me, is going to push the limits of council officers to the very edge. But the important thing uh, for council to note is that I intend to continue to have further dialogue with yourself, with Councillor Bradford, uh, with Councillor Crowe, to look at how we actually then select the other issues for debate. You'll have heard that the announcements on council housing, and for the first time we're building or creating council houses in, in the city. So there'll be a debate and a discussion around council housing. We can have a discussion about education and education standards and skills. There are many things that we can discuss, but that will be open to members of the council to decide through you and through Steve and through uh, Tom Crowe about what it is we want to debate and discuss. But we all agree that the first one should be on the agency that the country faces in dealing with climate, the climate problems. And I, I think we should move to the language of climate agency or emergency and rather than climate change. But we've already started to do some of that in the city, but we need to do much, much more. So that will give us an opportunity. And the reason why I like it, and I, again, if you uh, recall, and I'm sure you won't mind me repeating, I was absolutely 110% committed to having this structure around climate change, because not just me, but my grandchildren. And every one of us should be worried about that and worried about our future. So that's what we will do. And I believe that we'll get results when every single one of us in this chamber join up and join together and say to the members of the public, I'm sorry, but we're doing this in the interest not of you today, but our children for tomorrow. So that's where we'll be in terms of the climate change uh, meeting. And then we will follow that through with a select committee that actually, and a cabinet member that will actually deliver on what we do at the select committee moving forward. Well, uh, I'd just like to respond to that and say I agree with every word that Mayor Anderson has uh, just said. Uh, I don't think that having another Mayor of Select Committee is the right way forward. What we need to do is discuss the right way we can set up forums for continuing to debate on a number of issues. The number of times we can do it in the council is limited. Uh, and there are other subjects that we want to look at, which you know I'm particularly really interested in is health inequality. But the more we can do jointly, the more we can do without a lot of small resolutions which bring out the worst and is not the best, the better. So I welcome uh, your announcement today that there will be a cabinet member and a select committee and we will support you fully in that work. Thank you. Councillor Rafford. Without any equivocation, uh, let's be quite candid. The Merrill's Cricket Committee, when it last met, was, I mean, I used to leave some meetings after two and a half hours of field, but I wanted to go into such an analytics. Um, they were absolutely atrocious. They were absolutely appalling that we had petty, not even war matters about traffic lights and, and bus lanes and consultations and how many procedural issues to discuss the procedural issue, discuss the procedural issue. It was strangled to death and it brought out the worst abuse of the council committee meeting. So I think Joe was actually very generous in his description of it. It was absolutely atrocious. I can only remember in two years having one informed debate on how the mayoral model was uh, working in Liverpool compared to other local authorities. I think that was a presentation which Jeff provided. So let's put it. But, but if we are going to try and new new developments, um, I will put it up and I'm not going to move it to debate, as, as far as the constructive opposition here is concerned, um, we would be mindful 
but I think it would be helpful if there was a mayoral question time in balance to the mayoral statements. That would give a, a balance. Um, and again, we hope it's not abused. I also suggest, um, I think one of the most successful achievements was when the political parties and the trade union representatives were invited and it involved the Budget Worker Party. And again, it was, a, it was an activity that was sabotaged by the Liberal Democrats and Greens um, saying one minute we're in and the next minute saying we're out. It was a bit like hope and hope and didn't know whether they were in or out. Um, so I think people have got to use these opportunities constructively. It's not just about structures, it's about having the mind frame to use the structures to the purpose they were designed. Thank you, Councillor Hill. Uh, just very briefly, I uh, just want to sort of um, commend the sort of new structures that has emerged with the leaders meeting with the chief executive uh, regularly. It has brought about some, some really positive outcomes, and I do think this climate change debate is going to be extremely beneficial to us as a council and to the city. It was, um, it was actually great to hear uh, the mayor speak here in those terms about climate change, about how urgent it is. Of course, I completely agree. And I think we're finally going to start taking steps to really treat it with the urgency it deserves. Um, so just to, I was going to say a lot about climate change, but you said so much really, I'm just going to say I'm looking forward to the debate and I really hope it can be positive and constructive. Okay, any more speakers now? With that in mind, can we? It's, it's, it's on the other part of this agenda item, um, on the card vote. Um, my understanding of the CIC discussion was actually about extensions um, because it's the usual practices for people to stand. Um, and I've just checked the minutes of the meeting of the 9th of May is on that issue rather than card vote. So I don't know why that's come, come about. It's a mistake. So it should be about the extensions. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, so with that mind, can we agree with what the mayor has, has proposed for forward? Is that agreed? Thank you. Number 11, scheme of members is allowances 2019-20. Councillor Rupert, why are you obviously having to do? Um, I move that the recommendation of the independent remuneration panel on members allowances is set out in the report submitted on pages 153 to 176 be approved. Okay, so we have. Can I, can I just say, and I'll be very brief because I've made part of the previous council meetings, whilst we didn't make a submission this year, on behalf of the Liberal Party Group, I think the proportionate remuneration for the roles of ward councils is to, just proportionately low. I think the, 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 the allocation of extra money to the committee chairman is excessive to the extra work it does. Yeah, personally, sorry, my apologies. And I don't think it's in Kilter, and I don't, this has been my view for a long time, and I don't think that issue has been addressed. So on behalf of our group, we'll just move against uh, the item. And I don't mean that any disrespect to people. Um, having, uh, having, I think we just got it, it's not reflective of the workload uh, that, that we should be re uh, recognising. Okay, Councillor Crowe. Lord Mayor, um, we were invited uh, a couple of weeks ago to submit comments about the uh, Members and Outers scheme and I gave some, basically my, my belief is that with every single department in this council experiencing huge cuts and huge you know, cuts to their services, I feel that you know, it, it shouldn't be councillors alone who seem to escape um, any, any kind of impact from the austerity. So I, and, and like Councillor Radford, I think some of the um, special responsibility analysis are quite excessive. So I, I gave a detailed response putting a number of ideas forward for ways to reduce the overall cost of special responsibility analysis. And actually, that would have announced, uh, uh, amounted to uh, over 190,000 per year potential saved by the Council. A lot of money that could be ploughed back into frontline services where they're, where they're needed most. Um, they have, those comments were ignored and uh, the, the, the scheme remains as it is. Uh, so just want to register that I'll be uh, voting against this, this item. Okay, thank you, Councillor Corbett. Any other speakers? No? Us? Oh, Councillor Corbett?
proposed and we agreed that we would freeze our allowances and they were frozen for a very long time. We just got to be really careful here because for some people they haven't got a wage coming in apart from the allowance that they get from the council. Now, that is part of the mix of the discussion. I'm not saying that's what we drive it on, but that's part of the mix. So I think we just need to, to have a think about this really carefully because in comparison to other councils, we're actually not, not too bad. If you look at what, what we're paying, in some cases we're much lower. So if we could just have a think about that one because poverty for a lot of people in this chamber is very real and it's getting worse as the cost of living is rising. For some people, it's okay. I'm lucky enough to have a husband who's got a wage, which is brilliant, but it's okay. So that's not my only income. For some people, it is their only income. Thank you. Mayor Anderson? Look, Mayor, don't forget, this isn't an independent panel that, that we have that looks at, uh, at the allowances. Um, I, I know that there are allowances paid in other authorities that are. Uh, very high in, in, in terms of compared to, to the other So I think what we will do is ask for, uh, I think there will be again three months, but three months that we can ask for representation to be made to them again uh, in light of what's been said, and maybe we can ask for a cross selection of, of members or whatever to put that. But they are an independent uh, group, they rejected uh, that. Uh, uh, that it, it proposed increase, that they, they rejected that. But I think it, in light of what's been said, it's worthwhile for us going back to them again and saying, you know, that's just to be considered. Okay, so can we move to the votes? Um, those in favour of the recommendation uh, by Councillor Reid Bennett? Against? Uh, any abstentions? So the vote is 69 for, 7 against, and no abstentions. So it's carried. Thank you. 12 political proportions on committees 2019-20. Can I remind members that, as indicated in the report and the agenda, in order to suspend proportionality for the committees listed, all members present must vote in favour with no dissenting votes, this being to comply with the requirements of Section 17 1B Local Government and House Act 1989. If there are any members dissenting, then proportionality rules are applied to those committees. Councillor Ruth Bennett. I move that one, the political proportions on committees and the allocation of seats as set out in Appendix 3 attached to this note be approved. Two, the, the proposed appointments of chairs of committees as circulated be approved. And three, the deputy chairs of committees be appointed at the first meeting of each committee and reported to the next meeting of the City Council. Thank you. An amendment has been...